let's learn a way how you can switch on your confidence in two minutes. <laughs> how to switch on confidence in two minutes. Let's do a small experiment on your posture. Your posture affects how you think. So this side, I want you to stand like this. Just like me. This side, hands like this and looking down. So this was an experiment done in this book, Psychological Science, and also by a, a, a professor of uh, Harvard University called Amy Kudi. What she found is, when you are in an open posture, which is also called a high power posture, high power posture is open like this. Anyone who wins a race, let's say, race that, right? Anyone who wins a race doesn't win the race and say, I won the race. They win the race and go, I won the race. Open posture. You're confident. Maybe if someone is attacking you, you become like that, isn't it? Because you're trying to protect yourself. The open posture or high power posture, close posture or low power posture. So when you're in a high power posture, you increase your energy by 20%. <laughs> and your testosterone goes up by 20%. Because the testosterone goes up, energy goes up, right? Testosterone goes up, confidence goes up. On the other side, cortisol goes down by 25%. Cortisol is your stress hormone. So when you are in an open posture, you are reducing your stress by 25%. Energy goes up by 20%, stress goes down by 25%. When you are in a close posture or low power posture, what happens? Energy goes down by 15%, stress goes up by 20%. <laughs> so that's how your posture affects the way you think and feel. So be in an open posture. <laughs> now, something else I learned recently the distance between your ear lobe, the distance between your ear lobe, kanpetai shoulder kai. When you reduce this distance, your confidence goes down. You increase the distance, confidence goes up. Again, if somebody is, you, you see uh, children and all, when they sing, bam, whatever, so when you are confident, your shoulders are down. Relaxed. When you are stressed out, shoulders also may tighten when on, put a wood Right? What happens when you are on the phone? Down. Right? Phone nigga. Yes, so, so. Oh, with it, with the what happened after that? Go the car in. Go with shoulder may lung lung. So what can we do? We can stand like this and talk on the phone. Now can you see? Distance is still there. Hello. Hello. Oh, my meeting I'm in the meeting. So you can distance between the ear lobe and the shoulder also affects your confidence levels. So try to increase that. I have a magic formula to increase your confidence in two minutes. But this magic formula is made of four letters F E B B. F E B B. The B you experienced is body. Your body posture. F stands for face. What should you do with face? Smile. <laughs> when you smile, what happens is when you smile, because these are muscle contraction. When your muscles contract, it's sending a signal to the brain. This guy seems to be smiling. So let's make him happy also. <laughs> so even if you're sad, and you force a smile. Even if you are crying, you are crying. <laughs> Sanji said to smile. No? So even if I have cried, I will still try to smile. Right? What happens is, after some time, are a sadness se kaadu na? Because the muscles are doing something else. When you stood like this, these are muscles na? I didn't say in, they reduce your confidence levels or feel sleepy ke But just by changing your muscles, you felt that way. Just by changing your muscles here, you felt that way. <laughs> so same thing. Even if you force a smile, after a while it will become natural. So that's F stands for smile. Then you have something called mirror neurons. It's a specialized set of brain cells that you have in your brain, which are there to copy the emotions of others. Copy the emotions of others and to make you aware of the emotions of others. How many of you like 
to go and crack a joke with your boss. How many of you like to crack a joke with your boss? How many of you like to go and crack a joke with your boss when boss is in a bad mood? How many of you crack a joke with the boss when you haven't achieved the target? <laughs> hey, boss, call it out, boss. But my the joke can You won't do that because we have a survival instinct. <laughs> you go and crack a joke with your boss. The target you have not achieved the target, but boss, the target achieved. What is this target, boss? Appi, let's have a good time, <laughs> right? Are you appraisal le gari? Bonus le gari? Increment le gari? So we won't do that because we have a survival instinct. So this mirror neurons is also coming from thousands of years of evolution because of this survival instinct. Nowadays, your boss can maybe cut the increment or cut the bonus or maybe get you out of the job also. But can your boss kill you? Ban, eh? Sure, eh? 500 years ago? Can. 500 years ago, can. 1000 years ago? 100,000 years ago? Definitely can. So how long have human beings been living on earth? 200,000 years. So we have been civilized, even Buddhism is there how many years? 2600, Christianity 2000 years. We have not been civilized for more than like 4000 years. Even if you take 60,000 years, majority we were living in the jungle, right? So in the jungle, who's the leader? Is he the guy with the highest IQ? No, he's the guy who's the strongest guy. So if you go and upset the strongest guy when he's in a bad mood, so there those days boss can kill you also. So your brain evolved this thing called mirror neurons to make sure you pick up the emotions of the people around you. So that you pick up the emotions and you know how do I act in this situation. Our boss is upset. Damit is upset. It also evolved because the mother needs to take care of the child. When it's a small child, Baba Rakata can't bend, can't talk, no? So the mother needs to pick up the child's emotions from the mirror neurons. Otherwise, when the child is not well or, you know, upset or whatever, the mother won't pick up the child. So again, survival, right? Survival of the species, Homo sapiens sapiens. So therefore, these mirror neurons adapted in us so that we are able to empathize. That's why we have empathy. Mirror neurons, if they were not there, there is no empathy also. So when the mirror neurons are there, if I am happy and I am smiling at you, your mirror neurons pick up on this and say, Sanjeev seems to be happy, which means it's a safe environment because people are happy. You can also relax and be happy. <laughs> then what happens? You also smile. And then this cycle happens. When I smile, I look and feel good because I, I told you muscle contraction, it's sending a signal to the brain saying, you are happy, feel happy, smile, right? You are smiling, you must be happy. So let's make you happy. Others see me, they copy me, they also look and feel good. I see them, I also smile more. They see me, they also smile more, so everybody smiling. <laughs> Have you noticed when somebody cracks a joke, everybody is laughing? <laughs> Sometimes people who didn't hear the joke also laugh. <laughs> Why is that? Bovena. It's infectious, mirror neurons. So smile, F-E-B-B-A-K, first one is smile. F-E-B-B-A-K, number two is energy. Remember, I said get into peak performance state and we played some music and you all jumped. <laughs> energy, energize. You get up in the morning, if you do at least 10 minutes of exercise in the morning, when you go to work, your brain is going to work faster. You don't have to do a lot. Just do 7 minutes, 10 minutes of exercise. Sometimes you think, no, if I am exercising, I have to exercise for one hour. No. Have you heard of a 7 minutes app? Each exercise you do for 30 seconds. 30 seconds, 10 seconds break, right? 30 seconds, 10 seconds rest. All with your body weight and a chair. <laughs> That's all you need. Good workout. So when you go to work then, brain is active. So there was a study done in some schools in the US where they took this school, they saw the grades of the students, regular marks. And what they did was the first period in that school for all the students was exercise. Before you start school, one hour exercise. Then they found after a period of time that school's grades went up, became the best school in the town. Went up further, became the best school in the state. 
went up further, became one of the best schools in the country. There is a book written on this, if you are interested, called Spark, written by a medical doctor. S-P-A-R-K, Spark, which is talking about this whole thing and the experiment and how they did this and all that. So what's the point here? Energize. <laughs> the more you're active, the more you're energized, physically fit you are, better. So even if you're feeling scared, if you energize yourself, what happens? Confidence levels goes up. Again, you can even cry, cry and do it. <laughs> Still the mood will change. So if we be, be E is for energy. B is the posture for body. Remember we did the posture? So Amy Kudi was this person who did this research. This is all called open posture. Power posture, no? Low power posture. Low power. This is low power posture. Close posture, low power posture. Can you see what is happening when you make yourself smaller? Testosterone goes down by 15%. Cortisol goes up by 20%. Stress goes up by 20%. Okay? This is high power. You are making yourself bigger. There was an experiment done on this. People using the mobile phone versus people using the tablet versus people using the laptop. Who do you think was most stressed out? Mobile phone, tablet, laptop. Mobile phone. <laughs> because it's very narrow. You are closed more, right? Tablet you open more, laptop you open even more. <laughs> so, even when you are so you're sending so many messages each day, right, on the phone, try to do it with one thumb. <laughs> then you are still open posture. You are close enough. Especially sometimes you go and sit, sit and wait you know, for your boss to call you for a meeting or whatever. You go and wait in front of boss's room sometimes on a chair. Or you're, if you're doing sales or something, you go to the customer office and you wait in the reception till you're called. Until they call us, what are you doing? Phone <laughs> message. And you're reducing this also. And may pattern you're making yourself narrow. May pattern also you're making yourself narrow. <laughs> From both ways, you're making yourself narrow. And now you go for the meeting. What has happened? Confidence has gone down. So remember the posture. So why is this important? Because your mind and your body are connected. Your mind and your body are connected. If I tell you, I won't do it now, but if I tell you, think of one of your most saddest times in life. Close your eyes and think of the saddest time. And you just bring that into your mind and you think about that. What will happen? You will feel sad again. <laughs> now take today in the morning. I said think of one of your happiest points. Right? Remember? And you thought about it. And then you went and told others about it. What happened to you? You felt happy. So thinking of happy moments makes you happy. Thinking of sad moments makes you sad. Why is that? Mind and the body are connected. If you think of a situation you got really scared. What happens? Your heart starts to beat faster. <laughs> because you are reliving that moment. Mind and body are connected. So for example, if you think, imagine you are eating an orange now. And you think, smell like a Are You will start swallowing spit again. Mind and body are connected. So what happens is, body sends signal to the mind. Mind sends signal to the body, based on that we change our behavior, based on that we change our outcomes, based on the outcomes again the body gets a signal, mind gets a signal, may cycle, the cycle keeps happening, right? Mind-body connection, right? Like I was telling you earlier, let's say you go to a doctor and the doctor says, ah, Upeksha, you will die. What happens? She'll believe it and she'll die. <laughs> so those days in Africa, you had the witch doctors. Remember, African tribes, you had the witch doctors? Like in La Katta Diage, Voodoo and all that. So Voodoo will look at Vichitra. Vichitra, at 12 midnight today, you will get a pain in your arm. What happens? Vichitra believes the witch doctor, believes the Voodoo. Because of the belief, what happens? Belief is coming from the mind, right? Thought. Because of that belief, at 12 midnight, you get a pain in the arm. So there is something called placebo effect. 
placebo effect. Have you heard of the placebo effect? So there was an experiment done. One group of people, let's say all are having the same sickness killer. This group, I give the real medicine. This group, I give a boru medicine. But I tell you, I give a false medicine, just a sugar tablet. But I tell you, make a make a lantad vada hundai. This is much better than their medicine. What happens? You get healed before them. <laughs> placebo effect. All in the mind. All in the mind. All in the mind. So what Amy Kudi dad did was, she got people two groups, got one group to stay like this and the other group to stay like this, and then she sent them all for job interviews. <laughs> And the person interviewing didn't know who these, these people were, right? Only they see the CV, all same qualifications, same experience, right? Right, now you take this group. This group was the open posture, this group was the closed posture. When the interviewing people saw that group, they said that they were more passionate, more enthusiastic, more confident, more captivating, more comfortable, more authentic. Although nothing else was different. <laughs> people were the same. But that is how the interviewing people felt. Because after two minutes, confidence levels had changed. So these are all documented studies that have been done. And can you see, all these people stay in open postures. <laughs> Superman is there, Wonder Woman is there, Oprah Winfrey is there, Hussein Bolt is there, Mo Farah is there. When you win a race, you go, Aah! open posture. They have found even blind people who have never seen others doing it, when they win something, they also do that. <laughs> Which is, it's in the genes. People who have, who have been blind from birth also do the same thing. Because it's in their genes. And the last, the last B in FEBB is actually breathing. Breathing. Breathing is diaphragmatic breathing. Breathing from your belly. This is called diaphragmatic breathing. How this works is, when you take a breath, what happens is, this diaphragm goes down and your lungs. So when this goes down, what happens? There is more space here. The vacuum increases. So then the air comes into the lungs. So that's called a diaphragmatic breath, right? So when you take, can you see? Right? So the, that means the diaphragm has come down. Lungs are filling with air. How does this help us in increasing confidence? Every little air sac here in the lungs has a nerve cell which is connected da, 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 to the brain. So when each of those sacs fills with air, when you take a really good breath, all of those, what is it called? Areoli. The alioli or the garter, they fill with air. And then the signal goes to the brain saying, I am feeling good. There is no problem because I have enough oxygen. Therefore, you can't be worried. You can't be stressed out. You can't be upset. Because everything is fine. <laughs> Signal goes from the lungs to the brain. Now even you are upset, you are stressed out. What happens? You take a deep breath. Why does stress go down? Because the signal is going from the lungs to the brain saying, Me, why are you upset when the bear? Me, boru karan, ne, boru karek. Hey, because you have oxygen there. Why are you not? So the signal goes the other way. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. Now what happens? Mood changes. So that's why we take deep breaths. So even when you're stressed out, what is stress? Stress is because of a brain chemical called cortisol. When we get upset, anything, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, right? Your brain thinks, ah, she can't do it, no? Right, let's increase cortisol. Now you get the stress. So even if you're worried and you take your deep breaths here, signal from the lungs to the mind, um, brain says, don't worry, I don't see a problem, I have enough of oxygen. You know, oxygen is very important for the body. What is the... Uh, the weight of the brain compared to the rest of the body. Percentage, okay, anyone knows. So brain is only 2% of the total body weight. Your brain is only 2% of your total body weight. But your brain takes 20% of the oxygen of the total body. <laughs> Disproportionate, right, to the, to the weight. Most of the oxygen goes to the brain. That's why if you deprive somebody of oxygen for 5 minutes, you become brain dead. That is why when there is no oxygen or you are breathing shallowly, when you get upset, you get stressed out, we take small breaths. Which means, brain ne got excited. So you say, Indiko, I upset the mama upset. Ah, you are upset because of this problem. I am upset, but oxygen would jane Indika. Right? Api then na bhaiya upset pe mu. Indika upset, mama upset, mama upset in Indika tava upset, Indika tava upset in mama tava. Stress sagar, vedi vena, vedi vena. Cortisol, vedi vena.
So now, anit pete the. So when we when we have less oxygen, we get upset. Brain gets upset. Brain goes into panic mode. You try you try taking a breath and holding it. When you can't hold it anymore. You take a gasp in breath, although you know then I can take breaths whenever I want. But the automatic reflex of the body is you have been deprived of oxygen. So therefore, when you can do it, you go <gasps> because at the automatic panic mode, we go into the automatic panic mode. So diaphragmatic breath from there. Let's practice how do we do this. First is you have to sit straight. Can we all sit straight? Right, keep one hand on your stomach. And see if it inflates. Let's suck in the air like you're drinking a milkshake. So you, if you go like this, feel if your stomach is inflating. If it is inflating, it's the right way. Shoulders shouldn't go up. It's not like this. It's only here, right? So you go. One more time. So I'll teach you a technique of bringing your stress down in seconds called box breathing or 16 seconds of bliss. We are going to breathe in for 4 seconds, hold our breath for 4 seconds, breathe out for 4 seconds and hold our breath for 4 seconds. So box there. In, hold, out, hold. So you can do this at your desk, you can do this at a traffic light, you can do this just when boss calls, boss calls, ah, make out it. Uh, Damit, come to my room. Yes, boss. <laughs> Hello, boss. How are you? The 100 meters finals of the London Olympics. Usain Bolt is there in the race. See the athletes before they start the race. How many of them are practicing FEBV? You will see some taking deep breaths. You will see some having fun. Having fun is also good because it will relax you, right? You will see some walking up and down, some jumping up and down. Doing this with their body, Ostrega, right? So FEBB is a magic formula. You have already tried it also. So you can do the same, right? If you're shy, you can even go to a washroom, do it. So you go to the washroom side. And then go for the meeting. Hi boss, how are you? It all comes back to your choices. What do you want to do?